You need to get out driven by the thrill of discovery, but also one has to have the patience to get down and study. This may shock you, but I still use an electric typewriter and most of my big books and these huge volumes that you see up here have been written in that way. I love my students, I love my colleagues, except I must admit there were just a few odd cases where one had to grit one's teeth and force oneself to love them. Very difficult. As a young man, Philip Tobias spent half his life in the field, very much like Indiana Jones. And what I loved for this portrait was to take him back into the field again, using a lantern and a walking stick. I was one of the founding fathers of Homo habilis, and when I saw these new teeth, I said, good grief, we've got Homo habilis in South Africa. When it was found, it was deflated by pressure of earth. I said to Lewis Leakey, nobody has ever been that flat unless it be Twiggy. Last year, Charles Darwin kept me so busy. There were symposia, there were meetings, there were talks. We had a cocktail party at Bits University on his birthday. Cheers. There were many gloomy days, almost suicidal days, which one had to contend with. Happily, I lived long enough to see, to experience, a change. Nice and close to your face there, Professor. That's absolutely spot on. You've done this before, Professor. Archaeologist slash doctor slash model. I did put my teeth in today. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Tobias is a dignified man, but he has a wonderful, wonderful sense of humour. And if you look at that portrait, he's got a huge smile on his face and he enjoyed it just as much as we did. One's legacy will live on, even if my rather croaky voice is not still there to convey the message. Thank you.